वेलकम टू दिस प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग सेशन नंबर नाइन इन दिस प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग सेशन उल सल्व प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू क्वान्टम हार्मोनिक असिलेटर इंटरेक्टिंग उथ ए बाथ और एनभायरमेंट नाउ द फार्ष्ट प्रब्लेम कन्सिडार ए क्वान्टम हार्मोनिक असिलेटर डेसक्राइब बै द हेमिल्टनियन एच एज इक्ल टू एच जिरो प्लास भि हुएर एच जिरो इज एच क्रस अमेगा ए डेगार ए इज द बेयर हेमिल्टनियन so i have not written plus half here so because that's constant and v is equal to qf where f is a force exerted on the oscillator due to coupling to a bath consisting of another quantum system or an ensemble of such systems which commutes with the position q cap so that the linear forcing f uh the dissipation rate is given by this expression okay so to do this problem you have to recall the fermi golden rule which we have discussed in details uh, in the supplementary lecture also i have uh, even if you have missed the supplementary lecture or you have not gone through that but you know the fermi golden rule uh, that we wrote in the lecture class so the fermi golden rule says that the transition rate uh, for a system going from the state i to the state f is given by this expression that is 1 by h cross square you are going from the state i to the state f and as is the system operator so this mod square and the fourier transform of the correlator that is f of t this is these are the bath operators the system is interacting with the bath operator by via this operator f and this is the fourier transformation so this we know in fact uh, also we know that this is nothing but the spectral uh, noise density or simply s f f what omega where omega is equal to e i minus e f divided by h cross okay or let me write it uh, here as gamma f i is equal to 1 by h cross square modulus of this uh, matrix element that is i to f you are going via as okay and s f f evaluated at omega is equal to e i minus e f by h cross so here while i write this formula omega is considered to be positive because at this i if you recall the lecture we are going from the state higher energy state to the lower energy state so this is the transition uh, rate okay now let us consider our quantum harmonic oscillator and let's say we have uh, energy levels like that all of them are equally spaced so this is say the state uh, n and this one is n plus 1 then you have higher energy levels and here it is say n minus 1 okay now the rate of transition for the system when it's going from the state say n to n plus 1 uh, that is the system is going in the upward direction then the formula if i apply i will have 1 by h cross square modulus you are going from n to n plus 1 and the system operator here is q cap uh, that is the position operator then mod square and s f f as per our for, uh, expression we'll have omega is equal to uh, en because we are going from en to n plus 1 so this is what i have so actually because i am taking positive uh, omega so omega as per my definition i will take it positive so en plus here we are going from the upward direction so going from the lower energy state to the higher energy state so and omega we are t 
taking to be positive so uh, clearly i will write it simply as minus omega so this would be minus omega i hope you get the idea here now let me work out this quantity n plus 1 q cap n and q cap is you know it is zero point fluctuation okay q cap is the zero point fluctuation into a plus a dagger so therefore i have here it would be n plus one a plus a dagger n so if you evaluate it you can see that you will get x uh, you will have zero point fluctuation and this will give you n plus one square root of n plus one uh, okay that is what you will get because then you will have you know n plus one n plus one that will give you one uh, but if you apply a on n then you will get n minus one because of the orthogonality the other term will vanish so you will simply you will end up with this expression now you can write gamma n to n plus 1 is equal to x 0 point fluctuation square divided by h square n plus 1 spectral noise density evaluated at minus omega or i can write it as n plus 1 gamma up where gamma up is the upward transition rate for a single photon so uh, that is i will just write gamma up is equal to x zero point fluctuation square sff evaluated at minus omega so this is one expression we have let me say this is my equation number one similarly you can work out the transition rate when you are going in the downward direction n to n minus one that would be equal to one by h cross square you have to evaluate this quantity you are going from n to n minus one in the downward direction you are going q is the system operator it's mod square this time you will evaluate sff at plus omega right because uh, you see that here omega is equal to en minus en minus 1 by h cross and harmonic oscillators are equally spaced so this is a positive frequency so therefore we have to write here plus omega okay and similarly if you evaluate it you will get it as x zero point fluctuation square divided by h square uh, n s f f at plus omega okay or i can write it as n into gamma now we are going in the downward direction gamma so therefore we have another formula n to n minus one okay now as per the definition the dissipation rate is you uh, the downward transition minus the upward transition for dissipation to happen this quantity the downward transition rate has to be higher than the upward transition rate so now gamma uh, gamma down this quantity uh, from here as you can see this is uh, this is gamma up and gamma down also you can read out from here very easily so therefore if i put it i will have here x zero point fluctuation square by h square s f f at omega minus gamma up is x zero point fluctuation square by h square evaluated at s f f evaluated at minus omega so this implies that we get gamma is equal to x zero point fluctuation square by h square s f f at omega minus s f f evaluated at minus omega 
so this is the dissipation rate and it's an important formula what remembering now let us work out this problem express temperature t and the uh, average number of phonons and of a quantum harmonic oscillator in terms of the spectral noise density function sff omega okay let us do it now please refer to lecture uh, 28 uh, the lecture class where we obtain these expressions for spectral noise density as xi xi of omega where xi is the Langevin noise this was equal to twice m gamma m h cross omega gamma m is the dissipation rate of the mechanical oscillator into n of omega that is the average number of phonons or quanta of the harmonic oscillator this was uh, for when omega is greater than zero and then we also got as xi xi at minus omega at the negative frequency that is equal to twice m gamma m h cross omega n of omega and this is for omega less than zero let's say this is uh, formula number two now here the Langevin uh, noise operator xi takes the role of the bath operator f as explained in the previous problem we have explained about this bath operator in the previous problem now from equation one and two we can write if i take the ratio of uh, these two expressions then you will see that i in instead of xi now i will write f s f f of omega divided by s f f at minus omega that would be equal to n of omega plus one divided by n bar of omega okay from here you can see i can write this as one plus one by n bar of omega that is equal to s f f omega divided by evaluated at minus omega okay so from here i can write one by n of omega is equal to s f f omega minus s f f at minus omega divided by s f f at minus omega okay so from here i can work out the average number of phonons in term in terms of the spectral noise density function as s f f evaluated at minus omega divided by s f f at omega minus s f f at minus omega so this is what i obtain now regarding the temperature you see we know that average number of phonon is given by this expression one divided by e to the power h cross omega by kbt minus one so from here i can write e to the power h cross omega by kbt is equal to one plus one by n bar and which actually we have worked out this expression i already worked out so if i put it here then i will get it as s f f omega divided by s f f at minus omega okay and you can see now if i take the logarithm on both sides then i will get h cross omega by kbt is equal to logarithm of s f f omega divided by s f f at minus omega and from here uh, i can work out i can write the, the expression for the temperature t very easily that would be t is equal to h cross omega by kb kb is the boltzmann's constant logarithm of s f f omega 
divided by S F F at minus omega to the power minus 1. Now let us work out this problem. The symmetrized power spectral density of an operator O cap is defined as this. This is the definition for symmetrized power spectral density. You are asked to show that the, the symmetrized four spectral density S F F omega for F cap, which is the fluctuating operator that we have discussed in problem number one, is this. So this is what we are asked to find out. And also at very high temperature, that is when KBT is much much greater than S cross omega, we have to show that this expression for the symmetrized four spectral density uh, reduces to this expression. Okay, let us do it. So as per uh, definition of the symmetrized power spectral density of an operator, for the operator F, the fluctuating operator F, this quantity is now defined as SFF at omega plus SFF at minus omega divided by 2. As you can see that this quantity SFF bar uh, or the symmetrized power spect uh, force spectral density, uh, it quantifies the fluctuation introduced to the quantum harmonic oscillator from environment. And this fluctuation arises from the sum of power spectral density at positive frequency omega and at the negative frequency minus omega. And also you know that in the quantum regime, these two quantities, uh, which we have actually shown in the class, SF, SFF omega is not equal to SFF at minus omega. In the quantum regime, they are not equal, but in the classical regime, they are equal. So these things we know. And also I told you that F plays the role of quantum uh, Langevin noise here. Okay, these are already we know. Okay, now let us work out the expression. We know that the dissipation rate gamma for the mechanical oscillator, that is gamma m evaluated at frequency omega, this expression already we have worked out in the previous problem, that is x square zero point fluctuation divided by h cross square. SFF evaluated at omega minus SFF at minus omega. Okay, this is known to us where this x zero point fluctuation for the harmonic oscillator is S cross divided by twice m omega square on square root. And therefore, I can write gamma m is equal to 1 by twice m s cross omega into SFF at omega minus SFF evaluated at minus omega. Okay, so from here I get uh, SFF at omega minus SFF at minus omega is equal to twice M uh, gamma M at cross omega. So this is one expression we have. Also, from the previous problem, we have worked out the average number of quanta in the harmonic oscillator in terms of the spectral noise density. That is SFF at minus omega divided by SFF at omega minus SFF at minus omega. Okay, from here, I have this expression SFF at omega minus this quantity evaluated at minus omega. This is equal to 1 by n bar SFF evaluated at minus omega. All right. Now I have these two expressions at my disposal. This is say equation 1 and this is equation 2. I can play with these two. And from here, I can... One thing I can immediately write is... Uh, from these two expressions 
one uh, quantity that I can work out is S F F. Okay, because I just I I know what is this expression from here. So using this, I have S F F at minus omega is equal to twice m h cross omega gamma n n bar so i know this quantity so i have to find out the other quantity that is s f f at plus omega that would be equal to one plus one by n bar and s f f at minus omega is known to me so let me put the expression for that twice m h cross omega gamma m n bar okay from here i have s f f at omega is equal to uh, i'll have n plus one into twice m gamma m h cross omega so i now know the noise spectral density at plus omega as well as minus omega so it is easy for me to work out this symmetrized function at frequency omega that would be sf sff omega plus sff at minus omega by 2 if i put down the expressions you can see that i will okay let me put it down uh, first one i have n plus one n bar plus one twice m gamma m h cross omega the other one is twice m h cross omega gamma m n bar divided by 2 and from here i get s f f bar at omega is equal to m h cross omega gamma m 2 n plus 1 so this is the required expression okay now the, the other part is what happens at very high temperature for that to analyze that we know that this average number of quanta n bar is equal to 1 by e to the power h cross omega by kbt minus 1 now at very high temperature that means when h cross omega is much much less than kbt for this we have this n bar is nearly equal to kbt divided by h cross omega and therefore i can now write sff at omega uh, this average or uh, this symmetrized function would be equal to twice m gamma m h cross omega and then kbt uh, by h cross omega so what i will have here is uh, twice gamma m kbt okay into m is also there so this is what i have at very high temperature that means when kbt is much much greater than s cross omega as you can see that this particular function is now independent of frequency so we have that this spectral noise density is obviously frequency independent so they are symmetric in frequency and this is the case for when we are in the classical regime that we also discussed in the class let us now work out this problem this is a simple problem where our goal is to explore various limits of the mechanical susceptibility so as we have uh, learned in our lecture classes that the mechanical susceptibility of the harmonic oscillator mechanical harmonic oscillator was obtained uh, as this where chi m is the mechanical susceptibility uh, omega m is the resonance frequency of the oscillator m is the mass and gamma m is the dissipation rate you are asked to show that the low frequency response of the oscillator is given by low frequency means when the omega tends to zero that susceptibility modulus of the susceptibility would be given by this where 
k is the spring constant k is equal to m omega m square uh, and you are asked to show that at the high frequency at high frequency the response of the oscillator is given by this expression and finally you are asked to show that near resonance the susceptibility for a high q oscillator can be approximated by using this uh, expression which is a lorentzian so let us do it it's a simple problem let me first of all write down the expression for chi m uh, the mechanical susceptibility that is equal to 1 divided by m into omega m square minus omega square minus i gamma m omega okay so this is what we have the first part of the problem uh, is very easy because as you can see as omega tends to zero i can write chi m of omega is equal to 1 divided by m omega m square these are the characteristic parameter of the oscillator and 1 by m omega square is nothing but the spring constant k or if i talk about the modulus and this actually i have in the limit omega tends to zero so you have to be careful here this when i'm writing we are writing it in the limit omega tends to zero so modulus of the susceptibility is simply 1 by m into omega m square and that is the spring constant in fact physically speaking this result quantifies the response of a constant force and therefore it is independent of uh, friction as you can see as well as the mass because k is the characteristic parameter of the system now going over to the second problem in the high frequency limit what happens uh, to uh, do this first of all let me simplify this expression because i have to work out the modulus uh, okay let me do it chi m of omega is equal to 1 divided by i have m into omega m square minus omega square minus i gamma m omega so if i want to find out the modulus so first of all let me find out chi m of omega mod square that would be equal to one divided it is easy to see you have to take the multiplication of the complex conjugate then you will get m square omega m square minus omega square whole square okay and then you will have plus m square gamma m square omega square so this is the expression you are going to get let me open it up uh, if i open it up then i can have one divided by let me take m square common then i have omega m to the power 4 plus omega to the power 4 minus twice omega square omega m square plus gamma m square omega square now if i take omega to the power 4 let me take it outside 1 divided by m square omega to the power 4 that would be 1 plus omega m to the power 4 by omega to the power 4 okay minus twice omega m square by omega square plus gamma m square by omega square so the modulus of the mechanical susceptibility at very high frequency that is omega tends to infinity that would be equal to 1 by m omega square as these terms will vanish uh, in fact this is nearly equal to zero what it means is physically that the oscillator essentially behaves like a free particle and the response of the oscillator is inertial and is independent of steep, steepness and damping now let us do the last part of the problem in the last part we are asked how the response function behaves at the resonance that is omega is nearly equal to say omega m then this susceptibility expression chi m of omega let me write it once again this is 
1 divided by m into omega m square minus omega square uh, minus i gamma m omega this i can write as 1 divided by m into omega m minus omega into omega m plus omega minus i gamma m omega right so this is what i have now at resonance as omega tends to omega m at resonance i can write this expression chi m of omega at omega m i can write it as m into uh, this i can nearly write it as as omega is nearly equal to omega m so let me write it as twice omega m and it is not exactly equal to omega m so let me retain this term it is not zero and then i have here i gamma m omega m okay and to the power minus one so this is what i have so from here i can uh, find out the modulus of chi m actually this is as you can see this is a lorenzian so you can see it more clearly if i take the modulus square of this function that would be equal to 1 divided by 4 m square omega m square you can do it yourself it is easy to do omega minus omega m square plus gamma m by 2 whole square finally let us work out this problem consider a fabri cavity with a two level atom in it the cavity is driven by an external laser with frequency omega l an optical mode in the cavity is interacting with the atom in addition to its interaction with the bath or environment capture this situation by writing an approximate uh, hamiltonian okay let us do it this problem is akin to the james cummings hamiltonian so we have this situation we have this fabry perot cavity and this cavity is driven by an external laser with frequency omega l and we have an atom two level atom inside the cavity see this one it has energy e and uh, the k state uh, kt and kz and we have an optical mode inside it let me represent it by a cap so this is in in addition to this this mode is interacting with the bath and bath we can as you know that we can consider or model the bath as a collection of external uh, harmonic oscillator each bath is can be represented by an uh, operator b i cap okay i at oscillator bath oscillator can be represented by this uh, b i cap now let me write down the hamiltonian uh, term by term first of all uh, let me consider this optical mode this optical mode would is a harmonic oscillator so and it has a frequency omega optical so it, this is the energy of one uh, energy of this whole mode would be h cross omega optical a dagger a so this is the first part of the hamiltonian referring to the energy of the optical mode then the atom we can model it as a two level atom as we have already seen so this is h cross omega atom we can write it as sigma z by 2 so this is the uh, atomic uh, atom part of the hamiltonian and this atom field interaction i can uh, write down as so because of the inter this also you have already learned in the context of Z uh, james cummings model so that would be h cross z that is the interaction uh, strength between the atom and the mode so that would be a dagger sigma sigma is the atomic lowering operator a sigma a sigma a, a sigma is the atomic uh, a sigma dagger that is the atomic raising operator 
so this is what we have for the atom field interaction then this bath is also a harmonic oscillator it's a collection of harmonic oscillator that i can write as h cross omega i bi dagger bi right and it is the cavity is driven by this external laser so that uh, we can capture it by writing it as h cross omega drive that is the driving amplitude and because of this drive a photon is created inside this oscillator uh, inside this cavity so we have a dagger e to the power minus i omega lt so it has to be hermitian so we have this hermitian conjugate is also there uh, now we are left the last thing is that the, there is an interaction between the bath and the mode and that interaction we can capture by this particular term so we have h cross suppose this interaction between the bath and the uh, optical mode is omega i that strength and it's a complex quantity so let us write it's a omega i star uh, this is a is the optical mode and this interaction because of this interaction uh, a optical mode may be annihilated and a bat mode may be generated inside the cavity so all these things is captured by this particular hamiltonian so ai it has to be uh, hermitian so this part is the hermitian conjugate part right so this is what we have so this hamiltonian uh, captures the whole uh, situation that is described in the problem only condition here is that this particular quantity bi bj dagger has to be equal to delta ij thank you